Hello, everybody, Nikolai Bolas here, and welcome to another Corset 2020 draft here on the channel. In this video, I show you how to play Red Aggro, one of the best decks in Corset 2020 draft, and one that you need to be aware of if you are going to succeed in this format. As always, remember to hit that thumbs up button. If we get to 50 thumbs up, I'll post another video tomorrow. Subscribe to the channel to join the community we have here on YouTube, and leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions about the picks or plays that I am making. But most importantly, enjoy the draft, and I'll talk to you in the wrap-up. Okie doke, what have we got here? Well, I'm going to be talking about two cards out of this pack mostly. Chandra, Acolyte of Flame is much better than it looks. There is a decent amount of elemental synergies that just care about you having elementals in play. Flamekin Brawler, Risen Reef come to mind. Um, the red-green for the Creeping Trailblazer that gives these guys and makes them attack for four every turn. And then you, randomly you can sometimes get value just by ticking it up if you want to start using the instance. And then getting back an instant from your graveyard like a Rabbit Bite or a Shock can also be valuable. Chandra, Acolyte of Flame is just a great card and definitely the pick out of this pack. The next best card in the pack is definitely Leafkin Druid, but it's a good ways behind the Chandra. Leafkin Druid, of course, just great mana acceleration and then being an elemental is super relevant. But we're going to be starting off with a Chandra Not here and then trying to pick up cards that synergize totally with it. Um, Fry would normally be quite good but unfortunately in best of one which this is there is not going to be any sideboarding so we can't really main deck a fry though it is a uh, good card to pick up early if you would like to be uh, playing uh, in a normal draft similarly Veil of Summer is a good sideboard card but not a card we're going to be taking here uh, Sky Knight Vanguard actually works pretty well with the Chandra because um, Chandra is already red and then Sky Knight Vanguard also makes some tokens so maybe you could pick up an Inspire Charge and then the Chandra tokens work really well with Inspire Charge but I'm not sure if I want to move into white pack two, pick two just because uh, the white cards are generally a little bit worse and if I was moving into white I might take a Pacifism. Pacifism is just a pretty good white card. I think Sky Knight Vanguard is a little bit better but I think Pacifism definitely has some arguments. I think here though we're just going to take the Pack Mastiff. It's probably the best common in the pack. I mean Pacifism is a little bit better but I think Pack Mastiff keeping me in red to go with this Chandra is quite valuable and I think it's going to be uh, good enough to be worth taking here though. It is kind of close, and I could see a slight argument for the Sky Knight Vanguard. Maybe maybe I'm just supposed to take the Sky Knight Vanguard and not like avoid white too heavily. I just really have not liked red-white aggro, and I'd much rather play red-green so I can make use of the elementals a little bit better. Oh, Kadok, now Chandra's Ember Cat. Another nice little red common here. Works well with the Chandra here, because I can ramp it out. Also, it's an elemental. It works really well with Flamekin Brawler, which I'm going to be taking very highly within this sort of build. I think Renowned Weaponsmith is a little bit better than people might give it credit for. Uh... There can be decks where you just have like three or three like heart piercer bows, and then you can just start searching them out and just win late games like that, just with one card. But uh, and that's only a two drop. But and also it ramps for your like um, all of the colored artifacts, your meteor golem. So definitely a little bit better than people think it is. Um, but yeah, I think in this pack it goes Chandra's Ember Cat, and then maybe just Destructive Digger just to stay mono red. And I also like having access to at least to just have access to one copy of this in my decks. But though I would probably just speculate on a weapon smith over it. Uh, or even just an unsummoned, but I like Chandra Ember Cat here, keeping me mono red. I really have liked playing red in this set. And now we are going to move out of red. Scorch Spitter, an Infuriate, and Dagger Sail Aeronaut just aren't on the same quality level as a Frostlings or a Winged Words. Uh, in certain decks, I could see an argument for a Winged Words over Frostlings. In red blue specifically, I think that Frostlings is going to be a little bit better, not only because um, I don't really, I'm not going to really have any flyers to use the Winged Words. Um, hmm. It would also just because I'd rather be a little bit more proactive in my red blue deck than a winged words. There's some argument just for taking the infuriate to keep me mono red here, but I think Frost Lynx is good enough that it's worth taking. We're not going to be t speculating on a Molder Vine here, we're just going to be trying to stick to red. Dagger Sail Aeronauts would be okay, but there's a lot of four drops you want in your red decks. Um, Flamekin Brawler, Kelden Raiders, those types of things, and Chandra's Outrage, of course. So you don't really want need to prioritize Dagger Sail Aeronaut, and the bots don't really take it either. Scorch Spitter's okay in certain red decks, but um, I think I'd rather just take a Frost Lynx here, though. Maybe I should just try to play Mono Red. I'm not sure. Uh, hmm. I could see that being correct. I already have a couple two drops. A pretty aggressive Planeswalker. Infuriate also works well with the Chandra. Hmm. Fourth pick, Frostlings, is a bit of a signal, though. I th think we're just going to do the Frostlings. See where that leads us. And now, Reckless Airstrike would normally be a consideration just because it's a fine sideboard card. But here... Um, since we aren't really sure on our second color, we could still just be black-red. I don't think that Scuttlemutt's going to really pair with any of the red cards we have super well. I don't really want to be playing a green ramp deck with these cards either. But I could see Bone Splinters being alright. Uh, and then just playing like a red-black. Bone Splinters also works really well with the Chandra. So we're going to just take Bone Splinters here and maybe play red-black. Uh, instead of a using the Frost Lynx. Okay, and this pack does not really have... I guess Overgrowth Elemental is really good. So we could just hedge towards a red-green aggressive deck. 
Um, it also works really well with Chandra as well. So as you can see, every pack we've just opened a card that has really good synergy with the Chandra. I think Overgrowth is kind of the windmill pick out of this pack. And uh, it's, we're, we're very flexible in which direction we go here. Fairy Miscreant, pretty late one to pick up, and uh, we can see, definitely see more later. The question is, would we rather speculate on Fairy Miscreant and go for a red-blue aggressive deck, or take something like a Tranquil Ticket Crasher? I don't think we really need to prioritize Ticket Crasher, and we would rather just get an early, like a Fairy Miscreant and then maybe go kind of all in on Fairy Miscreant if, if we see some later. Ooh, another Fairy Miscreant. I'm really liking this direction we're going. This is only pack one. We have two more packs to see them, and uh, I think we could potentially really get there. So let's just take another Fairy Miscreant here over a Scorch Spitter. And now, batter, Pattern Matcher works well with the Fairy Miscreant, so we'll just take one of these over Fire Elemental. And now, Heart Piercer Bow. If we can get back that Renowned Weaponsmith, maybe we'll play it. And we did. Though Metropolis Sprite is also tempting. I think Metropolis Sprite is okay, but we're just going to take the Weaponsmith and, uh, because it's harder to get copies of that later. Scorch Spitter came back. We could just be an all-in aggressive deck, because we have we could potentially just end up with a lot of one-drops. Okay. Looking at this pack, there is a Fairy Miscreant, but that's probably going to wheel, so that's a good sign to start with. We're not going to be playing red-green here. We're just going to be playing blue-red, because now that we have the Fairy Miscreant train. I do like Chandra's Ember Cat, but I think Chandra's Outrage is just necessary here. Um, we are just going to be trying to play blue-red aggro, and uh, getting a Chandra's Outrage is really good. Just great removal spell, and we kind of already have a lot of early drops to play. And we're going to be getting this Fairy Miscreant on the wheel, because there's almost no way the bots take it out of this pack. Oh my gosh, another Chandra. Let's go. We're just going to slam another Chandra. We can get even more synergies with this now. And, uh, yeah, we're really going to prioritize cheap instants now. The Chandra and Embercat would be nice, but hopefully it wheels. Or the land wheels. Now we get an Embercat over a Trailblazer. Yep, more elemental stuff. Mask of Immolation is so good with the Chandra, because you can just start equipping to the tokens and then sacrifice them, so... Slam pick here. And there's a vial to go with our potential um, renowned weaponsmith. I don't th I think we'd rather have that than a main deck negate. Though maybe Goblin Bird Grabber has some potential. I don't think so. We'll just take a vial. Maybe end up with a little renowned weaponsmith package. And now reduced to ashes is just some removal. Though Maniacal Rage, just putting it onto a fairy miscreant could be okay. I think we just would rather have the removal spell. Another Heart Piercer Bow consideration. I don't really like running multiple Reduced Ashes, especially because this might be a 16 land deck. So let's just take another Heart Piercer Bow and maybe have a nice Renowned Weaponsmith package in this deck. I like it over Octoprophet and Maniacal Rage. Okay, Goblin Smuggler, perfect pickup. Just good card for sneaking through damage. And uh, I'm fine picking that up. I really like Goblin Smuggler and the bots don't. And the Very Miscreant Wield. Maybe we'll get the Swiftwater Cave this pack. No, but we can get a Manifold Key. We could just get an Anti... I don't think Anticipate's really what this deck wants. Let's just get the key. Maybe we'll need some extra unblockable. Sure, we'll just take a Golem. With a couple of Ember Cats, maybe the Fire Elemental becomes more playable. So we need one more Fairy Miscreant in this pack. <sighs> Chandra can get back. Convert mana cost three or less. How many of our... So, this, the thing I'm thinking about is Flame Sweep with Chandra. Because then it's kind of like a six-mana board wipe if you have a Chandra in play. But I don't think we really want that effect. I think we'd rather just get pick up the Infuriate, wheel this Goblin Smuggler. Normally, I would take the Goblin Smuggler. But because Infuriate's so good with these Chandras, and also because we're probably going to wheel uh, the Goblin Smuggler anyway, because this is, that's how Arena works, I think it's worth just taking the Infuriate. And now we can pick up a Frost Lynx and wheel this Goblin Smuggler. Evolving Wilds isn't really what we need in this two-color deck, and similarly, Rapacious Dragon's kind of a bit too slow, so let's just get the Frost Links. Oh, uh. Portal of Sanctuary is actually a really good combination with Fairy Miscreant. It's also a good combination with Frost Links. Not really anything else. There's another Pattern Matcher. We do have a lot of multiples, and we don't have a ton of fours. And Portal could just wheel. We could also just pick up a Winged Word, so I think affecting the board is more important, so... Let's just take a Pattern Matcher here. Metropolis Sprite is an option, as is the Destructive Digger. Hmm. We have one, two, three, four, four two-drops. I think we kind of just want another aggressive two-drop. We already have one, two, three, four, five, 
and we're going to get more three drops. Yeah, let's just take the sprite. And a pretty easy pack Mastiff here. Doesn't look like we're going to get there on Fairy Mist Greens, but we still have two more packs after this one to see more. Oh, let's just take Reduced to Ashes, I guess. And Lava King Brawler. This was the perfect pickup. Oh my goodness. Excellent pickup there. And we did not get there on Fairy Mist Greens, but we're going to take the Active Trees in here. We just want more cards to go with this Chandra, and uh, Goblin Smuggler is uh, another good card to pick up. I knew we'd get this other Goblin Smuggler as well. Portal is a decent dish combo. I think with two Pattern Matchers, running three Fairy Mist Greens is okay. Though it's not ideal. We'll play take the Bird Grabber because it can gain flying. Get another Reduced Ashes. Okie doke. So let's just build this deck real quick. It's going to be a pretty simple build. Hey, we got there. Nice. I think this is going to be a 16 land deck. Um, 9-7 probably. Maybe just 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, let's just go 8-8. Eight, eight. And I think we do want to run the Act of Treason. We have the Mask of Immolation and also two Chandras that kind of work well with it. And let's just run one Pattern Matcher because it's kind of clunky. So let's just check the curve on our deck. Curve is looking pretty good. Let's just double check that we're not playing any clunkers. I don't think we really want Scorch Spitter because we kind of already have the one drops covered. So maybe we'd rather run um, the Pattern Matcher. Hmm. Yeah, I like this build. I think it's going to be pretty good. We could consider the uh, Renowned Weaponsmith package, but I think our deck has enough playables that we don't need it. And uh, let's try it like this. Okie doke. This hand is definitely a keep. We have two drop into three drop. We have Active Treason, which isn't super good here, but we have a lot of potential in this hand and uh, seems good to me. I would have really liked to have a shock in this build. Scorch Spitter is not going to match up particularly well against our deck, which is good for us. We just have too many cheap plays to make it good. Okay, yeah. Scorch Spitter should really never go in the same deck as a Leaf Kin Druid. Unless you have, like, so many Risen Reefs. Because um, in that scenario, you're just never really going to be using the Score Spitter optimally, I don't think. Yeah, this looks like a ramp deck, so I don't know why they're running Score Spitter. And given that it's a ramp deck, let's try to. I think we should just cut off some of their mana with a leaf, like cut off the leaf kindred here. Because this constricts them, they can't necessarily cast a five play drop, they can't cast a six drop, that's for sure. Oh, they have Chandra as well. They got in for a damage. Hmm. I think we just want to kill the Chandra this turn. We don't want him to go like shock, flashback shock, kill another creature, and we are pretty far ahead here. Our reduced ashes can take down the mammoth spider. Yeah, we 
just going to use it now. So we'll trade four damage for two damage here. Because you want to push a little bit of damage. If they ever tap out for like a big play, including their Leafkin Druid, like if they tap that thing, then we'll just pack to treason and win. But yeah, I think our deck is pretty well suited. We can also pattern match our next turn to get another Frost Links. A Greenwood Sentinel. Sure. Okay. Let's pattern matcher pre combat, I think. To get a frost links. Then we'll just attack with everyone. We could have got the Ember Cat, but the reason we want the Frost Links is because it's just so much more effective. Like, tap down a Leaf Kindred next turn. Hit them for a bunch. Also, if we draw a land, we can go Lynx plus Act of Treason, which is just probably going to be good enough to win. I think we just want to keep the pressure on. We can also just Lynx plus Bird Grabber. Okay, so now we're just in great shape. We're hitting them for four a turn. They're only hitting us for two. We're going to have this act of treason soon, and we're going to play out two spells this turn. Leafkin Druid is out of the mix. My opponent's deck is just doing too many things. This is a classic example of trying to do too many things. Like, they're a Chandra deck, they're a Greenwood Sentinel deck, but then they're also a Leafkin Druid deck and a Gift of Paradise deck. You really end up Scorch, but they, there's just too many things going on. There's just, like, you shouldn't be running Scorch Spitter and Gift of Paradise in the same deck. Oh, Thicket Crasher. Hello. I will happily take your Thicket Crasher. Is legal. Gives all of our other elementals trample, so they can't even really jump block. Even if it's not technically lethal, it is lethal. Like they block here, they take two, four, six, ten. Then we have Chandra's Outrage, we have We put them to one, they have no outs, so. Because even if they did have like a howling giant here to try and stabilize, we have the goblin smuggler, if they have a removal spell, we have uh, more bodies than they have guys. Yeah, we have Chandra's Outrage. They're dead on board even without my Chandra's Outrage. We'll just cast it because it's quicker than using the Metropolis Sprite Pump. Boom, let's go. That was pretty good. Whew. Well, that's how you do it. Okay, we are finally on the play. We're going to keep this hand. I did change the deck a tiny bit. I added another reduced ash, another mountain, uh, and I cut one pattern matcher and one goblin smuggler. Okay, sports spitter will not be long for this world. Uh, I think we'll just play the pack mastiff now, though. I think we want nine red sources to cast the, our double red Chandras. I might change back to the other version at some point. I just want to try this out. Because if I went up to extra lands, okay. Just get 
take this guy down. If he attacks, we'll block. The reason we'll block is because if he does too, he's going to kill our creature anyway, probably, if he's attacking, so we might as well not let him get the damage in. That was a fine draw. We are going to attack first, because if he doesn't block, we can just spend our mana to double pump. And this also makes something like a combat trick onto the Scorch Spitter less appealing. Yep. Play the mask. And the uppercut. We're not going to use the mask right now because the Scorch Spitter is already pretty useless. It's already kind of like a dead card. Uh, but if they dr have a two toughness creature that we have to kill, it could be relevant. Agonizing Siphon, okay. We will kill it now so he can't hit us for two. And then here we are just going to attack and double pump. <sighs> We're not doing that well this game, I don't think. I'm going to change the deck after this game. I don't think we really want the three Paramus screens. I just don't think they're going to be very good. Wow, my opponent ditched a real spell. Interesting. You never know when you'll need all your mana, so we're just going to play the Swamp so we could maybe go reduce ashes plus equip mask. Oh, that's so good for us. Or just an extra pump on the pack mass and could be all the difference. Yeah, I like the idea of cutting fair miscreens greens from the deck, even with especially when I'm cutting a pattern matcher. But now I can add back pattern matcher and smuggler. guy and then we will pass turn. And then on end step we can kill the Lavakin Brawler. We equipped to the Pack Mastiff because it's a high priority removal target. So it would be better to um, we'll just take one less damage this way. So the board is relatively even but we do have this mask of immolation. We have them at nine life. Probably fine trading off, but we're also just fine waiting, so we'll just wait. Because if we draw a Goblin Smuggler, we're in great shape. Bird Grabber. I'm just trying to think about our outs, and uh, I think attacking could be potentially correct if just because if we trade off with one of these guys then a um, like top deck to act of treason is better 
Wow. We thought of it a little bit too late. Okay. So now if he attacks with Blood Burglar, we can block Zack, our guy, to stop the life gain. Or we can just trade. Sure. Mountain. Oh, Chandra. Why do I never have enough red mana? Ah! Okay, we're just going to use this act, this act of treason plus mask emulation combo. I think I would gain control of that, right? I think we just win if we take this guy, though. Might have to block the Kelvin Raider. That's seven. And this is eight. I do wonder how the unholy thing works though. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Whew! Nice win there. Okie doke, we are on the draw here. Once again, can't cast Chandra, but this hand is solid enough. We did adjust the deck a little bit. We cut the Fairy Miscreens for a Fire Elemental, moved back down to a 8, uh, to a 9-7 mana base, so 9 mountains of 7 blue sources. And, uh, perfect Ember Cat, thank you. And then we added, I guess we should have added back the last Goblin Smuggler. We'll change that, make ch change that back, but Kalia, oh my gosh, Natural Tron achieved. Oh no, that's so silly. We'll just flex on him, I guess. Maybe that was bad. Maybe now they just know I have something, but I kind of wish I could cast this Chandra. Turn three Kali is brutal. I would like to draw a mountain, please, deck. Oh, man. Casting a Fire Elemental would have been really good here. As it is, I think we have to settle for a Bird Grabber. And then getting in for two. I've had some mana issues in this draft, for sure. Like, I can't seem to hit double red no matter what I do. Sure. Kinda useless. Oh, gosh. There's our double red. If we can get this fire elemental into play, we can get a pattern matcher. I like getting the fire elemental down, I think. That is just the biggest thing on the board. And it can block those Sky Knight Vanguard tokens. My opponent's a little bit mana screwed. Never mind. 
They missed one land drop, and now they get to play their Dawning Angel. Pass this May. the Ember Cat here so we can also get the Pack Massive into play. for This way we can block one of the tokens. If they don't kill my Chandra, which I suspect they will, but I'm not 100% sure they will, um, we can do some cool things with our Infuriate next turn, combined with the Goblin Smuggler. holding up five mana, which is suspicious. Pattern Matcher, my Goblin Smuggler. Actually, Pattern Matchering an Ember Cat might be better. Let's think. So they have the Dawning Angel that they didn't play this turn, so that means they probably have Chandra's Outrage. Or Murder. Next turn, I want to be able to play Goblin Smuggler. Plus Infuriate. Plus maybe a Pump. Or we could just get an Embercat into play this turn. Having an extra 2 2 body. Hmm, so it's like whether I would rather have a 2 2 or an extra Goblin Smuggler. Probably an extra Smuggler. Oh, I did bad back the extra Smuggler. Okay. Enter. So they didn't cast anything that turn. Which is weird. Okay, so now all their cards are on the table. We all we know all about what they have here. They are at thirteen life. It's just about whether we can kill them. Because they have us on a two turn clock. We actually have not enough.
This is weird. Very aggressive blocks. So we just kill their Kalia. Pump our guy once. And then hope they don't have a pump spell to win the game. Or a Chandra's Outrage. Which I felt like they had before. But maybe they choked this. This is a weird... I can't imagine them not having Chandra's Outrage, but then again, I thought they would have used it on that other turn. Like, they could have just played around my stuff better. Okay, so I can get a Pattern Matcher for another guy. I can just attack with everything. They can't really have any good blocks here. could have hit him for five with this thing but that takes two of my guys out of commission so then they can just go block because sure. like if they if we had given this unblockable and hit them for five then this would have been tapped as well so this would have been two less damage and it's already yeah so it would have been overall like one more point but I would have had to spend all my mana Should get another Goblin Smuggler and then play our Metropolis Sprite in case they have a way to give this flying, like Angelic Wings or something. This was a weird game. Boom! I cannot believe we won that, but I guess playing the games actually counts for something. If they just hadn't blocked with their Kalia, we were dead. Whew! On to gold. Let's go. Hello! You made it all the way to the end of the video. Welcome to the wrap-up. The way that the deck ended up playing out was it went 3-3. Three and three. The first match that it lost was because we got wrecked by Knight of the Evon Legion. They just played it on turn 1 when I was on the draw, and it kind of wasn't close after that. The next game that we lost was because we got mana flooded and drew all lands. I think we drew 8 lands, 1 spell, so that wasn't really fun to watch. And then the third game that we lost was to just a stupidly good curve out where my opponent played Diamond Knight and then played four green spells on the next turn so it was like and then they capped it off with an overcome so that was how we ended up losing but i think that red aggro is a solid deck it's a good deck to know how to play i think that we had a pretty good version we were missing like two shocks if we'd had two shocks our deck would have been insane but you can't always get exactly what you want uh we just weren't really fully able to maximize the chandra sometimes that happens if you did enjoy the video remember to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel to join the community on YouTube and get updates whenever I post new content. If you click that bell, that will help you find more of my content in the future. Leave a comment in the comment section down below, hashtag on to gold, to let me know you made it all the way until the end of the video, or just any questions or comments you have about the channel. And finally, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons over on patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. They uh, directly support the channel and help me continue to make the videos that you guys enjoy on a daily basis. So thank you to them. And as one of my ways of saying thank you, I like to uh, give a shout out to uh, certain pa the, the patrons that support at the uh, level of credits uh, so if you are an eternal of Bolas $10 or more per month you get put into the credits of the video and uh, I really do appreciate each and every person that does that so thank you for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you next time